So it's uh, <clears throat> 2.32 p.m. Um, 16th of November, 2020. It is so stinking hot in here. It is. My room, this thing says 32.4 degrees centigrade, which is what? 90.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's very hot at 37% humidity. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not too hot and humidity. So. Okay, so uh, I made an appointment to see a skin specialist. Uh, at the local hospital. Um, the reason I wanted, uh, I got a referral from my GP to see because I thought I have these spots on my, like these dark spots on some of my knee. So I just wanted to get that checked because my brother got checked himself checked. So I wanted to get myself checked too. Actually, the reason I'm doing this is because my brother did it and he was sort of like, what is this? What are these marks? But they ended up being hyperpigmentation. So for me, I'm like, I've got marks too. So the thing is like, it costs like $260 to see him. And I'm like, why is it co I, uh, Obviously, he, he doesn't bulk bill, you know, because like there are some like these specialists like for instance my endocrinologist he could have charged i guess 260 or whatever but for me he sort of did the medicare so i didn't have to pay any money because i think the way it works is if you're a specialist you, you you get a certain amount from the government and anything you but you can add on to maybe specialist medicare fees Oh, it's like a out-of-pocket cost. How do medical specialist fees work? Why do we have to out-of-pocket cost for specialist services? Who decides what patients pay? What are rock star specialists? What's an appropriate fee? And when are specialists gouging patients? This is from the Sydney Morning Herald. Eye watering out-of-pocket specialist fees have become big expensive concerns for Australian patients. Massive and unprecedented costs can hobble low-income families, especially when patients need long-term medical care. And surprise gap payments are enough to make many people wonder why they bother paying for private health insurance at all and why crowdfunding sites are flooded with hundreds of patients pleading for donations to pay thousands of dollars in specialist fees. Okay. Okay, this is the thing. How much are we paying out of our pockets? Fewer than one third of specialists bulk billed in 2017 to 28. So bulk billed means you don't pay any money. You don't. You only pay like uh. You don't pay anything. The the government pays the money. Uh, patients like my specialist. He. I mean my uh, endocrinologist. He. I mean, he could have charged extra for me, but because like he's. I don't know, kind of nice. <laughs> uh, maybe because I'm trans or something. I mean, I could have paid. I, I guess I, could, I I didn't negotiate that anyway. Patients pay just shy of eighty dollars on average for an out of hospital specialist service, up from sixty five point seven three in 2014-2015. So that was 2017-2018. For in hospital services only, more than one in ten come with gap fees, twelve point five percent. Another 7.5 uh, at least 1 in 20 in hospital services, 5% for which patients pay unexpected out of pocket fees. Plastic and reconstructive surgeons were responsible for the biggest out of pocket payments. More than 1 in 3 of their patients paid an average gap of $385. So that, if you're going to go to a plastic surgeon, Maybe like for a consultation or whatever. Okay, this. Okay, the cheapest would be specialist consultants. 
Huh. You hit the average gap. This data doesn't even. Uh, we know that some. This data doesn't include our hospital like specialist fees, and even with this overall, all these things is dropping. We know some specialists are charging egregiously, up to tens of thousands of dollars in out-of-pocket costs. We've seen the bills. These brazen billers may be the minority, but that's cold comfort for the patient slap with a surprise fee that empties their savings account. We also know that many we also know many Australians delay or avoid seeing a specialist because of the cost. Then there are the more nefarious billing practices known as booking fees and bill splitting that Medicare and APR data won't pick up more on the delivery. Okay, here you go. How does the gap work? Firstly, if you're a public patient in a public hospital, you your treatment is free. Okay. I am a public patient because I don't have any private health insurance. Uh, if you are a private patient in hospital, so that means someone who, is, who has a health insurance, every medical specialist you come in contact with can charge you a fee on top of your hospital fees, which can include out-of-pocket costs. So that's for like maybe surgeries or whatever. A gap fee or out-of-pocket costs is the difference between the fees charged by a doctor. Okay, here we go. A gap fee or out-of-pocket cost is the difference between the fees charged by a doctor and what Medicare and a private and the patient's private health health fund will pay for. So if you don't, if I, for instance, don't have a private health insurance, that means the uh, the I have to pay the specialist um, what he charges minus what Medicare. So for instance, when I made this appointment to see this uh, skin specialist. He's charging two hundred and sixty dollars to for that appointment, and uh, Medicare will pay seventy six point fifteen dollars. So I have to pay out of pocket two sixty minus seventy six. Ugh, seventy six. Two sixty minus seventy six point one five. So I have to pay $183.85 out of my own money. Because that's what he's charging. I mean, I mean, there could be specialists, like a skin specialist out there, who only charges Medicare. <clears throat> and if he's only charging Medicare, I, I assume that for my appointment, right, uh, I would, uh, he would only get $76.50 because that's what Medicare gives for the appointment. So he has the, the specialist. He has the... I guess the discretion to say uh, to charge how much he wants to uh, on top of the seventy six dollars fifteen uh, for Medicare. So so I'm like I'm just thinking like you know I want I want to have more options in like who I want to see because so I need to like either discuss with my GP any other possibilities if there's an if I could see another specialist who does bulk billing so I don't have to pay out of the pocket expenses or I'd find maybe I could go to my uh, you know the GP but she charges money <laughs> my, my GP the, the bulk bill so he doesn't charge any on top of the what the Medicare pays him uh, so what I'm saying is I would like to find a skin specialist who does bulk billing so I don't have to pay because like I, I was also told I asked I asked them so because they said in the email please be aware there will be uh, added charges for any other procedures done on the day so for instance if I if they wanted to do a biopsy right uh, apparently that's like hundred and ninety dollars for the biopsy minus some get from Medicare and look at this bullshit. If you require pathology, you'll be invoiced directly from the pathology department. <sighs> pathology. You know, when I get to my tests done, like uh, when the endocrinologist gives me the thing, like, um, why did I go see this person? Uh, I get that done by Medicare because when they do the pathology, he puts it in Medicare. Yeah. And this is too expensive for me. I, I need to, like, when I, when I see my GP, I would say, 
please can do you know of any uh <clears throat> Okay, so they, uh, they, they, I want to see a skin specialist who doesn't, who, who does bulk billing. That means they only take Medicare. See, okay, let me just read some of The Australian government subsidizes specialist services through the Medicare benefit schedule, MBS, and sets the schedule fee for consultations and various procedures. The schedule, the schedule fee is the amount the government considers appropriate for each service. With the exception of some GP services, MBS rebates don't cover the full cost of medical care. Some health policy experts and the Australian Medical Association argue government rebates are set too low and some bear no resemblance to the co true cost of the service. The MBS rebates typically cover 85% of out-of-hospital special services and 75% for private patients in hospitals. That means patients and their private health fund pay the difference for in-hospital fees. But I think when you go to an emergency department, it's free. Because remember when I went to get my surgery, I didn't pay anything. Because I think there was an emergency. I went to the emergency department, so they did everything was just, I had, I, I, you know, if, I didn't have to pay anything for that. So that was really good. Because, you know, I didn't have to pay for that, staying in the hospital and all that. Hmm. Specialist consultations out of hospital usually come with out of pocket charges. So I guess there are specialists in hospital. I think this doctor is in the hospital. <coughs> About 72% of patients had out-of-pocket costs for specialist services in 2016 2017 5.3 million people. Okay, there's some for no gap and... and Okay, there, there's something called a no gap and a known gap, K N O W N gap. Uh, so if you uh, under a known ga no gap, if you have a private insurance, then the doctor will only uh, charge how much the private health insurance will pay, right? So if, for instance, the private health, if you want to see, let's say, a skin specialist, and the Medicare will pay seventy six dollars. And the private insurer says I will they will pay hundred dollars and the doctor says okay I will charge hundred plus seventy six so the patient doesn't have to pay. That's a known gap. And a known gap let's see now let me read from the article. A known gap is where a doctor charges a fee set about the p amount an insurer will pay and the patient pays a known rate out of pocket. A typical known gap is five hundred dollars. And that has to be a really uh, <laughs> big procedure <laughs> or something. Uh, uh, Alright, let's leave that no gap no, no thing. Okay. Who decides what specialists charge? Specialists are free to set their own prices. Their charges aren't regulated, which sets Australia apart from other countries with a uh, fee for service systems like Canada and France, which set some limitations. The government is prohibited from regulating fees under the Commonwealth Constitution. What? The government is prohibited from regulating fees under the Commonwealth Constitution. Oh man, I can't believe that. Health policy experts have floated several forms, so reforms to curb excessive specialist fees, including direct government regulation, introducing financial incentives such as the GP bulk billing incentive, stopping specialists from accessing Medicare rebates if they charge exorbitant fees, or an opt-in Medicare system only for doctors who agree to certain fee restrictions. But the more likely route will be government measures to make specialist fees more transparent. Yeah. 
Oh, this is a quote. There are rocks. There are the rock star specialists who market themselves as the best in the business and charge premiums for their supposed superior skill. Uh. All right. How big are the disparities in the bill you could call? There can be huge variations in the fees doctors charge within the same specialty. A 2015 study published in the, in the Medical Journal of Australia um, <coughs> found specialists could charge up to five times more than their colleagues. The study found 10% of patients are paying cardiologists less than $23 out of pocket. 23, that's all right. While another 10% are paying more than $127 with no clear justification for the variation. For instance, significant differences in the cardiologist's experience or performance outcome. So, even without those differences, uh, some specialists charge 23 while others 127, even without any justification for the variation. In New South Wales, uro urology surgeons charged on average $7,049 in out-of-pocket fees compared to $4,110 in Victoria and $1,509 in Tasmania. Why do you have to pay so much money to... Uh, Because when I got my uh, when I got my surgery, <laughs> I didn't pay anything for that. Again, that's because the, the the specialist I saw, the urologist, again he did it uh, because that was his discretion. I guess he's he's helping trans people or something. Maybe maybe he knows. You know, sometimes the doc they have a, the choice to charge or not charge. Uh, you know, so when I went to get my surgery, I, I that was all done on Medicare. I didn't pay for the surgery, you know. Whereas I, whereas I saw that doctor didn't charge me, but before I, I saw another doctor, uh, a surgeon, and he said, "Oh well, we have to do this on the private," and he, his fees were like four thousand or five thousand. I had to pay, <laughs> and then like. But then I saw this other surgeon and he did it. He didn't charge me anything. So you, you see how it's like depends on like who you're uh, seeing and what they. See, I got a specialist. Look, what's the government doing to avoid specialist bill shock? So I got a specialist bill shock. I mean, I can't even, I have to pay something, but. Come on, this is so fucking stupid. I gotta pay. Okay, fine. I'll pay the $260. Fine. I will pay. Okay, I will pay the 185 whatever. But if I rec But why should I pay for the pathology, man? I mean, my pathology, you know, the blood tests and all of that. They, I, I don't, I don't pay for those. My urologist says, do it on Medicare. My GP said, do it on Medicare. You just have to tick a box. <laughs> so I'm like kind of pissed. <laughs> uh, Okay, what can you do? The best defense against exorbitant out-of-pocket fees and bill shock. I got a bill shock. Is understanding the system. Okay, I'm trying to understand. Asking questions and making sure you can give informed financial consent. There you go. Informed financial consent. See, this is what I needed. I needed... My, I needed to have a conversation with my GP before he wrote the referral. Say, 
he sh I should have had that discussion. So I should have said, um, how much does is this? How much is the fee? Uh, are you aware of any specialist who does bulk billing or who has a cheaper? Um, does this specialist charge for uh, um, biopsies or whatever? Because that was a you know that's a, for biopsies or another. And I'll, you know, d d does the specialist? Can I get the pathology done on the Medicare? Uh, you know, I should have asked all these questions, but I didn't. You know why? Because I always assume that the doctor is right. The doctor knows what he what he's doing or he, her is doing, and I, I it's like I have this attitude like I can't ask. It's that it's that kind of in, having that independent and the self agency to to you know look out for myself. I just defer it to these authority figures to make decisions for me. No, I want to make decisions for myself. So I should have asked, I should have asked him questions so I can get, so I can consent to this referral because I just, anyway. Um, no, you can shop around, see? I want to shop around. No, you can shop around. So I guess when I go to the uh, specialist, um, what I'm gonna do is okay. I will keep my appointment, but if he says, "Oh, you, we we need a biopsy," um, I need to talk to him and say, "Oh, can, do you know of any other?" Uh, because I don't know. Maybe they just they just say, "Oh, we have a biopsy," because they want to make money. I don't know. So I want I want to like say, "Do you know any specialist who can do a biopsy without?" <laughs> you know. I need to shop around. You are not locked. No, you can shop around. You are not locked into a financial relationship with a specialist. Look at this. Let me read this. You are not locked into a financial relationship with a specialist simply because your GP referred you to them. My GP referred me to the specialist. Once you've been given a fee estimate, there is no harm in asking if they can offer you a better price. Specialists will often adjust their fees for patients who, who would struggle to cover the cost. See, so I can't tell to the specialist. What can I ask my specialist? What else? These are some of the questions. What are your fees? Is this an estimate? Um, are there any other costs or fees for other doctors and surgeons? Will I have any out-of-pocket costs? What are the MBS item numbers for the services you are going to perform? You can look up the MBS schedule fee for these later. Do you have a no-gap or non-gap arrangement with my health fund? If the cost changes, when will you let me know? How will you bill me? When will I need to pay? Can I get this in writing? <laughs> okay, this is a very good article. Um, but I'm going to read that again. Under what can you do? Let me read from this article. The best defense against exorbitant out-of-pocket fees and bill shock is understanding the system, asking questions and making sure you can give informed financial consent. No, you can shop, ar no, you can shop around. You are not, quote, locked into a financial relationship with a specialist simply because your GP referred you to them. Once you've been given a fee estimate, there's no harm in asking if they can offer you a better price. Specialists will often adjust their fees, adjust their fees for patients who would struggle to cover the cost. <laughs> I, I always thought that I could, I could never negotiate. I always had the idea that if a specialist says, oh, this is a fee, then for, I had the attitude like, okay, that's a fee. I, you know. But they're saying you can actually uh, ask them to give you a better price. So you can actually negotiate that. So that never, that never really like occurred in me because I'm like so intimidated like by authority. And I say, uh, someone says, this is a fee. And I'm like, okay, that's the fee, I guess. You know, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> Uh, there are questions you can ask before you visit. <sighs> anyway, so that's what uh, I made. Mean, uh, the appointment's on the 1st of December at, uh, it's in the, you know, clinic in the hospital. Close by. Uh, mm, mm, mm.